What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Easy Peasy Podcast, episode 97, coming at you from Minneapolis. We'll probably be doing that again later, but it'll be a special episode. This is a real Easy Peasy Podcast, fam. We're doing it big. <laughs> Joining me this week, Luis. Yeah, what's up, guys? What up, Luis? What's up, guys? Dude, you've been on two in the last couple. In the awesome. same month, man. I'm super pumped, super hyped to be here. I'm so glad I'm here with my homies, dude. It's it's it's. I don't even know what to expect tonight, man. It's going to be a good <laughs> night. We'll get into what we're about to do, but first, Nick. How's it going, guys? What up, Nick? Always happy to have you. You're my homie. You're my true motherfucker. <laughs> but hey, guys, we're out here cheers. on a Saturday night in Minneapolis. Let's cheers. Cheers. First things first. So, Nick, I'll toss it to you. Why are we even here? We have some cool stuff to talk about with Netflix, SpongeBob Creator, this weirdo pro poker... Uh, bet that's going on and then we got that ef news that we gotta finish off strong with but first nick i want you to say why are we even here so we are here in minneapolis to kind of as a pregame to my wife's birthday we're seeing uh, g jones and yeti and honeybee it's gonna be a good time we got two locals that's pretty fun undisclosed don't know who they are <laughs> one of them's like pro fesher or something like that i saw okay. like the post like pulling into the parking yeah, lot yeah. literally uh i think the caboose which is i've been to the caboose a few times have you guys ever been there never been, never been there dude. so minneapolis we got this caboose it looks like a, a warehouse almost like an air hanger kind of weird setup like outside at least looks like that not inside at all right but it's like a really long so think woolies in des moines but i told this I, we, were, we just went to amazing dinner guys right that like, was holy uh, so good best five yeah. stars best burger i've ever had Luis and I kick stop. zombie burgers ass kicks bebop's ass oh <laughs> well burger. yeah definitely bebop's as a fast food burger but i do love yeah. bebop's uh, but we went and had this amazing dinner. I had a steak. You guys both had that burger. We had speakeasy. that amazing charcuterie board. It was a speakeasy. It's good. It was yeah. awesome. I've it was never actually little, been to that. Little dude first, had to uh, open the, the little like peephole. Open the little latch. That was little my first uh, speakeasy experience. So that was cool. It was really cool. For yeah. sure, guys. It was awesome. And like I said, uh, while well, I was telling Luis, Chantel, and Lydia right before you guys came into the party room because we got three hotels here each couple has their own hotel i actually kind of like that guys yeah. like i'm not gonna it's lie nice. sure. i love you guys but like it's cool to just have your own area have your own space you know? yeah and i mean Luis and chantel got kind of the short end of the stick they're in the between all three of us like our group our girlfriend or uh, our group so they yeah. have to have like the party room pre-game room but that's okay um it will be really fun. So, yeah, we had, like, a charcuterie board. We had two bottles of champagne split yeah. between all six of us, all us and our significant others. It was perfect meal to kick it off. But first, I want to talk about the caboose, guys, because you guys haven't been there. I've seen – Tell me. One of my favorite tours of all time. I can't remember the opener. I want to say mansions, but that's not right. Touche Amore, Balancing Composure, Circus Survive. Ooh, I shit. saw that tour here in Minneapolis. Okay. Good but, line out. Or Excuse me. I saw – the off date tour in Minneapolis at the Caboose and okay. it was Touche Amore and Balancing Composure. Nice. And then the next night, oh God, I'm so wrong, guys. <laughs> what? In in Minneapolis at the Caboose, it was Circa, Touche, and Balance. And then the next night I saw Balance and Touche in Omaha. Oh, okay. So That's I did awesome. a twofer nice. in two in two days. Like because I love those bands so much. I'm are. getting off topic though, guys. The Caboose is like a really long narrow looking venue and it's going to be really interesting i think awesome for an edm show because it's like a small think of like almost um half of woolies okay cut it in half and then set it next to each other uh, so like okay. the bar is super long and it like leads towards the door is it sort of like uh, what the venue for big wild was because i felt like that place was long and not so deep so you know? That it kind of sort of I think that venue's co closer to Woolies in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. So think of uh, that for everyone listening at home that may be in the Midwest. That was the waiting room, and I love that venue. It's my yeah. favorite venue in Omaha. I love the slowdown, but I like the waiting room a lot. Anyway, it's an awesome venue for uh, an EDM show. You can go in and crack that open, boy. Yeah, go for I'll, it. I mean, if I edit it out, I don't edit it out. You know, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Who knows? But um, yeah, we're excited to see the show, guys, because G Jones dropped one of my favorite albums of the year. For EDM, for sure. Yeah. And I have to give a few more spins to like actually think it's maybe like one of my favorite albums of the year overall. For sure. But it's called The Ineffable Truth. Yes. Right, Nick? Yep. Yeah. So give me like three sentences on what do you think about it? 
<clears throat> um, it's kind of one of those albums where it's sort of a journey all, from front to back. You know, you can listen to a couple of singles here and there and be good. You can listen to Time. You can listen to um, uh, Arbiter's whatever. Arbiter's Theme. Arbiter's Theme. Like yeah, you can that listen to those songs. That exactly like Bass Sector. Yeah. When I first heard it, like Lydia played it right after Shayna, like l- the album came out, she like sent it out to our like friend group or something, mm-hmm. and I Lydia downloaded it, and then that night she played it, and I thought that was Bass Sector. Like he yeah. just came out with a new song. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! And I love how Shayna put it earlier. G Jones is Bass Sector's protege. You know, he's heavily influenced. They've collabed a lot of times. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's one of those albums that is best listened to front to back. Like it's a really good experience all the way through. You know, it's not single heavy. It's not feature heavy. There's no features on it. I don't that think I'm so. aware of. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can. Um, hey, this is a po- this is a phone open podcast, guys. Because <laughs> yeah. I know we're doing it out no in notes. a hotel room. So if you do have your phone on you, you can use it no matter what. You know, not a big I, deal. I will. Ha- I'm gonna comment a little bit on this. I've been a pretty big D Jones fan, and for a while, I felt secluded when I first started listening to D Jones because I felt like it's more of a cult like type of DJ. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would listen to him in my car and be like, "Man, I'm like, I don't think a lot of people really like feel this, and I I really want to see him more." Luckily, I got really lucky throughout the years, and I got to see him more and more, and I've got to really experience it and just like really follow his journey. Always been a big fan, but I have to say this album, man, it's just so good. I, I, you know how there's a lot of bands, how you're just like, oh, their older stuff is better. You know, I, I dig their old stuff, but man, he just takes it up another notch every album. And I, I love this album so much. There's not, it's not like, oh, he, he was better before. No, he just keeps getting better and better. And that's what I appreciate about a producer like him. G. Jones is awesome because he loves and respects Des Moines' EDM scene. Oh, yeah. You know, no. he came to D- Des Moines for the first freakout at Valair Ballroom in 2015. Mm-hmm. He's come to Des Moines so many times in between. And he also, I love how Shane pointed this out, six months to the day, we saw G. Jones headline the right. first Cosmic Kingdom out at uh, Sleepy Hollow, correct? Yep. Out yes. in Des Moines. So Made like, history, dude. Yeah, dude. Like Pleasant sure. Hill history. <laughs> <laughs> if, if anything, dude, who would... I, I kept telling Nick like a thousand times, dude. Who, did we ever think that we would get to experience a freaking festival in fucking outskirts of Pleasant Hill? Never. Yeah. Never. Totally like I would have never expected it. It's insane. Sure. It's insane how far Des Moines has gone. And, and props to Des Moines. I love Des Moines and how much it's growing and what they're doing to make it an even better city. Like it's just, it's a good place to live. We got a lot to look forward to tonight, guys. Any other discussion on Yeti or Honeybee that you want to toss out to the fans out there listening? Um, Yeti, super excited to see him. I saw him a couple of times at um, for my first time at Five One Five Alive Music Festival. Mm-hmm. That's when I saw him. He was yep. part of the Trinity, the oh, Trifinity, Trifinity. Yes. Excuse me. Who? So which? Is, that's Yeti, Toadface, and. Uh, Mount Analog. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Really? That was crazy because that was if you listeners that long time listeners may know, but that was the weird show that it was in this <laughs> tent and there was a pool of spaghetti. Spaghetti, yeah. Yeah. straight up. All because of there's like memes online. There's like so Yeti has like a cult on Facebook and people just post a bunch of like Yeti spaghetti memes. That's yeah, where the spaghetti, spaghetti came from. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I've been I had been listening to Yeti for a while on like SoundCloud and stuff. He's definitely he's experimental. In with um, those the Wakan guys. He's done a lot of stuff with Space Jesus. So that's kind of how he's kind of gotten himself on the map, but. His, he'll be a very experimental bass type of style. And Honeybee, I guess, is they're dating. Honeybee and Yeti yeah. are... They're, I think, actually, uh, so Shana that's really cool. That really There's cool. a rumor, too, that Yeti and Toadface are actually, like, cousins. Oh, that's that could be. Both, like, <laughs> and you met yeah. Toadface. You have I a picture on I your that was, Instagram, that Luis amazing. I loved underscore Lisea. I didn't even expect that, dude. We were just, like, literally chilling, waiting for an Uber. And out of nowhere, like, all the DJs come out... Uh, G Space, right. Milano, and then Toadface, and then Mil- actually G Space who introduced me. He's like, "Here's the man. Here's the man." He's like, and he's like, "You got to meet this guy, man. This is Luis. He's a fucking shit." <laughs> no and I was like, dude, "Dude, you're being too nice. I'm no- I'm a nobody." And I was just like fanboying hard. I was like, "Damn, oh, yeah. dude, that's like, so cool. This is insane. I'm meeting you. I didn't even expect this. He was so nice. He's like, my name's Todd. Nice to meet you, man. Oh, oh yeah. his name's Todd. Yeah, yeah. Toadface. Yeah. Oh, I love Makes that." Sense. 
Dude, that's hilarious. Um, so that actually makes me think that he loves the movie Little Monsters with Fred Savage because there's a Todd in there and they call him Toad. Oh, that's uh, a good really connection. Can. That actually yeah. very well Dude, could be. <laughs> Moody and I just that's rewatched crazy. that movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time because I mm-hmm. love Fred Savage growing up. Man, The Wizard. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? The Wizard. But let's move on, guys, because we do have a shorter episode this week, kind of, sort of, but is it a legit Easy Peasy Podcast episode. So we have some topics to talk about. Let's talk about the SpongeBob creator dying at 57. I got some notes here. I know we traveled, guys. Oh, my gosh. Listeners playing at home. We had a three-and-a-half-hour drive turned into a six, almost seven-hour drive, guys. It was guys. hell. There's a blizzard insane. literally happening as we speak. It was brutal. It's tamed down a little bit, but it's going to start up again around 2 a.m., which yep. is when we're leaving the show, so it's a long night ahead of us. But what I'm trying to get at is I have a bunch of notes to rattle off just because I know you guys didn't have yeah. time because of the fact we had to drive. All day. So, SpongeBob creator died. Thank you for putting this in the notes, Luis. Steven Hillenberg died of ALS. If you guys recall, okay. um, ALS is Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah. I believe that's what the Ice Bucket Challenge was for, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys remember yeah. that was a I, huge meme yeah, oh yeah, across yeah, yeah. the internet? Oh, yeah. So, he died of that. He was diagnosed about a little over a year ago. Okay. And so, in 1999, he came out with SpongeBob SquarePants. 50 languages, 200 countries later. It's won Man. four Emmys. It won two Emmys with, when he was part of the show. Okay. So, he actually left the show in... Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. He studied marine biology, became an advocate for the oceans and for just keeping the ecosystem safe there. And he was an instructor for marine biology for three years, or 1984, 1987, so about four years. And then he joined Cal Arts, California Institute of the Arts, which okay. you would do crazy good at, Nick, <laughs> um, because it's all about animation. It's all about awesome Art. I mean, like so many great animators come out of there. Oh yeah. And then he joined Rocco's Modern Life, one of my favorite really? Nickelodeon shows. Same. What? That's he, crazy. He was on Rocco's Modern Life doing animation from '93 to '96. He spe- experimented with some shows while he was at college there that were actually picked up traction. Obviously, never like got on Nickelodeon or anything like that. But he he saw some success, so that's why he right. got hired for Rocco's Modern Life. Fast forward to three years later. We got SpongeBob SquarePants Man. merging his love for the marine biology, his love for the ocean, and his love for animation together. That's to crazy. Tr- to teach kids about yeah. life, not only oh, yeah. marine biology, not only spreading that message, but life. And man, let's move on uh, to some more about his life before we start talking about what SpongeBob meant to us. But 2004 is when that first movie came out, and that was meant to be five years after the show dropped and aired, first aired. Yeah, it was meant to be the series finale, guys. Right? Yeah, I remember really? that. That's crazy. I remember right? hearing but about it that. It wasn't because Nickelodeon wanted that money. It was so big. <laughs> so I mean, they, they couldn't just. They're like, quit. hey, we want to make more episodes. Yeah, but he didn't, so he left the show as the showrunner, and he ended up coming back in 2015 to make the second full f- full length film. Yep. And he was with the the show until he couldn't be with the show anymore. He was too sick. So what does SpongeBob mean all, to you guys? I'll start. I remember when SpongeBob came out in 99. That was the summer of 99 when I was moving from one house in Des Moines, Iowa to Johnson, Iowa. My parents were building a house that summer and I was growing, moving to a new place. I just remember watching the show and being enamored by the fact that it was hilarious, but I didn't feel like a dumb boy for like liking like a right. kitty show like <laughs> yeah. as a nine-year-old you know right. i still felt like it hit like at an eddie levels of like oh yeah funny yep. and there was like jokes i didn't get but i didn't get because I was a little bit of, a little bit of, yeah if you go back and watch some of those episodes now man they have a lot of uh kind of adult like jokes in there you know stuff that you know for the parents and stuff, stuff like that the kids would not yeah, get it's at great first yeah and man my appetite from 2000 1999 until 2002 louis hit this on uh hit this a little bit at uh, dinner tonight i my appetite for cheeseburgers was through the roof <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. i remember telling my mom mom i want a cheeseburger all the time yes. I wanted a mcdonald's or b bombs or a homemade uh, mushroom and Swiss cheeseburger Ooh. or something, dude. So, so much <laughs> so that uh, this is actually off topic. I don't have notes or anything for this, but uh, New Year's Eve, 1999, I ended up having 
we ended up all as a family making mushroom and Swiss cheeseburgers <laughs> because I wanted one so bad from watching so much SpongeBob. I That's told insane. Nick in the restaurant, I was like, dude, if this was if the Krabby Patty was real, this would be the Krabby Patty. Did yeah. you really? Yes. I didn't oh, yeah. hear yeah. that. Yeah. Holy shit! And actually, funny enough, G Jones has a song called Krabby Patty. The secret, secret formula. <laughs> the, the Krabby Patty secret formula. Full circle. Oh, synchronicity, man. Synchronicity. Synchronicity. Sorry. So, oh, I'll toss it to you, Luis, since you're already telling us this funny stories. What does SpongeBob mean to you? Like, as you know, we're 27, 28 years old now, guys. I will say I watch it to this day, and I am. I've watched. I started watching it probably when I was like eight. Years. Like you were nine, I was probably like eight. I remember the first episode. It was so hyped on Nickelodeon. It was just oh like, yeah, dude. It was like a release. Like how we get so hyped about like clothes or like a CD. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. I remember waking up that a morning. New toy. Waking up on time. Turning on the TV and it was that bubble episode <laughs> where they're, they're like they, they do the little lemonade stand with the bubbles. I was so pumped, so hyped. I was like, I could not believe it. This is like this show is crazy, but I love it. It's just starfish and a sponge, and then they introduced Sandy at that episode too. And it was just, it, it meant a lot to my childhood because I watched it growing up. The cool part of it about it is that I have a daughter now. And I know for a fact she's going to grow up watching SpongeBob, oh, yeah. which blows my mind because, like, it literally, like I said, it kicked all the Nickelodeon. Like, you still see some on, like, they have, like, a boomerang Nickelodeon now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the actual Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon itself still shows SpongeBob and doesn't show any of the other original, like, cartoons, which blows, like, it's crazy. Like, it, that's how much in demand this show I mean, is. Yeah. Nick, the show meant a lot to a lot of people i don't know i remember my little siblings watching it a lot and at the time i didn't appreciate it enough and i didn't really start appreciating it until i was actually like an adult and i would like i went back and watched it and then Man, would you, would you great. say that maybe like some other more adult themed like cartoons got you to appre- go back and appreciate some older shows like that or maybe co- like uh, Rick and Morty maybe? So I mean, because Rick reasons... and Morty does take like a, a definitely takes a note from SpongeBob in the sense that yeah. like they have like adult jokes, but they're more so like obviously adult, right? Yeah. But SpongeBob kind so, of started that. I don't know if you guys had one or the other, but I was more of a Cartoon Network kid. And then I know a lot of people were more like Nickelodeon. I'm raising my hand both. because I agree, dude. I'm 100% more of a Cartoon Same, Network yeah, kid. Okay, yeah. so you were too as well, Louise? I like so, Nickelodeon. I like, I like them both. I, I watched lie. Nickelodeon for exclusively for Rugrats. Right? Yes. Yeah. And Rocco's Rugrats. Modern Life and Ren True. and Stimpy. Yeah, so there were some great Nickelodeon ones. But I didn't start appreciating Nickelodeon more until, like, like I said, until I became more of an adult. Like I went back and purchased a bunch of like – I. I purchased the uh, Ariel Monsters DVD. I got um, I bought the first season of Rocco's Modern Life actually. Really? So like I'm you going back that? I'm going back and uh, rewatching all of the old Nickelodeon stuff because I know I watched it shit watched it in passing and like um Hey Arnold and all that stuff. Oh, I watched man. All- Okay. You guys like at first I'm like, yeah, I'm a Cartoon Network kid. I am, but Hey Arnold well, was that. Now that next I go now shit. that I go back and think about it, it's like, well no, I really did watch a lot of it too. We but all I just didn't appreciate for a it as best much. friend, right? Be- best friend. <laughs> a best friend like Arnold and what was his other friend's name? Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> we all longed for that, man. The, the little, Growing up. We gotta do it then. Woogity 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 woogity. The wing wing so woogity woogity was rocket power, but Oh shit, you're so Ger- right. Gerald and, and Arnold did the like wing 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 yeah. Like it's like a thumb war, but it's like But you heard the like little sound other. effects behind it. Wing wing wing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's oh, get man. back on track with SpongeBob though, guys. Nick, uh my question to you is like I guess both of you guys is the fact uh, one thing I have on my notes here is that it was so cool to see like real life stuff spliced into it. Do you remember when like they throw like the sponge on the ocean? Oh yeah. Like, yeah a yeah. real sponge. Yep. That yep. was crazy. And yeah. that was like close, kind of close to like what Ren and Stimpy was doing with like that real, like except Ren and Stimpy did it cartoon wise, but like right. the real look at a pimply face. Oh yeah. When they would yes. zoom in. Yeah. It was just so cool. It's like yep. they took notes from other shows and aspects and just brought it in. Well, and you can see that happening now in like shows like, um, uh, Rick and Morty probably. Rick, right? Well, no, they much, don't, they much. don't do the actual like real zoom life in. stuff. Um, it's like that zoom in feature. It's so yeah. crazy. Um, like family guy, family, family guy, guy does it okay. all the time where they they'll do, do like clips of like real, t- like live. Oh, action you're so stuff. right. They do it okay. all the time. Also, do you remember when they would have the special, like, uh, little, like, curated series of SpongeBob where they have the pirate, like, the oh, mascot, yeah. and yep. then he'd have, like, he, they'd, he'd, like, they'd film it, like, in the house. I think that house. was a big part of the first movie. 
it was, but it also yeah. there was some episodes where he'd be like, you know, chilling in his house, and then they'd go like <laughs> into the actual episode. That's great. Yeah. yeah, SpongeBob was very special to an entire generation, and just like you said, Luis, I love to hear you say it that it's gonna carry over to the next generation. Yeah, daughter. my daughter's gonna see it. It's insane. Like I can grow up and be like, "Yo, I watched that too." Guys, and it's SpongeBob, still growing. Strong. SpongeBob is celebrating twenty years next yeah. year. 2019 still active. blows my mind man dude uh, good for him and uh rest in peace thank you so much for bringing he did so much... such a good job put a lot of joy in everyone's heart like it was for sure. a really good job yeah so let's keep it on with the animation slash cartoon stuff this will be a shorter topic probably but netflix to make that live action cowboy bebop guys I don't know how I feel about it, and I'll get into some notes here. Like I said, guys, these poor guys had to drive up here through that snowstorm. <laughs> I did my notes because my beautiful lid was uh, driving for me. But So Netflix made that live-action cowboy – or is going to make that live-action cowboy bebop. The anime is from 1998, only 22 episodes. It's a shorter anime than yeah. we're used to, yeah. especially nowadays, guys. Dragon Ball Z was like 100. <laughs> Dragon Ball Super now is like already 40 or 50. Yep. Naruto is like 120. Bleach is like 100, 100 plus. Mm-hmm. But so – I always loved Cowboy Bebop back in like when I watched it in the early 2000s when it came to Adult Swim. Yep. Yeah. Because, dude, what's his name? Spike Spiegel. He made smoking look so cool, <laughs> man. Oh my god. Yes, Instead of just be dude. sitting in his finger and he'd be yes. holding it and he'd just be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bounty hunter. So <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> so what? Man, I loved it. Um, So yeah, he made that smoking look cool. I watched those one-off episodes when I watched Adult Swim. I never actually got to see it in order because it would be nights I couldn't stay up until midnight or whenever it came on. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. As like a nine, ten, as a little kid, and they made like women appeal like really sexy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that that female bounty hunter's name, the main female character bounty hunter, but yeah, she was very attractive for an anime for character. anime character and you're just a little kid just like holy shit you didn't see curves like yeah. that anywhere at that no. point in time yeah. right guys let's get into the netflix's track record it's not great it's great it's not, it's not, great. not great what are you talking about we got some uh people pounding on the door for no reason so i guess i'll let Luis go ahead and get that and i'll have to edit this out <laughs> god i hear you <laughs> what's what's up? Up? Hey! Yo, 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 what's up? What's up? Special girl <laughs> secret set. <laughs> girl secret set up in here. We got the girls came come in here. But what I was gonna say is Netflix track record is not great. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist, haven't seen it. Have you guys seen it yeah. at all? No. The live action? Is it good? It's a oh, movie. Oh wait, the new one? Yeah, the no, movie. Ha- the movie oh no. I so Chantel is over here saying no, she hasn't seen that movie. I haven't seen it either, it's not great. But the Death Note one, Lydia and I watched it while we were watching Death Note. Like I was the live showing... action or whatever? Yes. It was really exactly. good. It was, it was really very good. bad. It, it was, was very so bad. bad. I hated it. Sure. You guys, you are not, you're talking, but you're not on the mic. So like, well, you, you talk doesn't... about the actual live action. <laughs> the live action sucks. And it was with William Defoe as the um, as the death or whatever. I didn't think it was that bad. Where? Of course, I'm sure the anime series is. <laughs> Different. So the anime series is amazing. I love it. It's one of my favorite animes of all time, if not my favorite. I mean, I love Dragon Ball Z, but like you know, they spent a full episode powering up. So, uh, Death Note though, this spent a full episode powering. <laughs> they that's do. What, you, that's what Dragon Ball Z abridges is for on you, yes, YouTube. Yes, no, exactly. I think you're the one that first told me about that, Nick, and I absolutely love it. So for listeners playing at home that don't know, and maybe Luis, who's looking at me kind of puzzled. It is where they literally cut out all the fat. Like, and it's just, they're telling you, you okay, Android Just get 17, the story. Android 18, they're going here. Krillin's going there. And, or, yeah, it's just the story. It's none of that power-up stuff. Are you guys talking weight. about that movie? The... No, it's like a, you, it's cut by fans on YouTube. It's called Dragon Ball Z Abridged. Abridged. And they mm-hmm. do it for all other uh, animes out there, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a bunch of them, yeah. Dude, amazing. I might do that for My Hero Academia because I love it. There probably is one, yeah. I got you into it, right? Oh, dude, I finished it. No I'm, way. I'm done, yeah. So it's like, what, four, three or four seasons? Uh, there was like uh, almost 50 episodes, I think. Yeah, 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 so I love it, but I couldn't... So, like, I love anime, but I am feeling like I just can't watch those. some of those where, like, you can just see, like, they replay the same animation for, like, literally seven, eight seconds yeah. because they have to, like, have a 23-minute episode for, you know... Anyway... 
we're getting a little bit long on the tooth on this one, especially when the girls came in and crashed the party. <laughs> but I want to toss it to you guys. I've been talking too much on this topic. What does Cowboy Bebop to you mean to you? Excuse me. And what do you are you looking forward to this? Especially like I said with Netflix's track record. I mean, I hope they do a good job of this. I talked to earlier one of our friends, Alex Bush, about it because I know he was a big fan too, and he just he doesn't really have high hopes for it. And I think a lot of people feel the same way because I mean, it's how are you gonna recreate that show in live action? Because there was a shit ton of violence. I'm pretty sure he dies in like a lot of episodes, and somehow <laughs> he just comes back to life and the next episode and you're like how did that just happen and right. it's just um all i gotta say is best of luck to netflix and how they do it i'm still gonna watch it but i might agree that's a, that's a great point yeah. to pick off of there Luis. is that i'm still going to watch this no matter yeah. what even yeah. if it looks awful and i um a really fun story to tell you guys real quick uh, so jawbreaker and halloween i was actually looking into doing cowboy bebop Really? Yeah, I was oh, doing Spike awesome. Spiegel. I was looking into it because you get his whole outfit, his whole getup. Yeah, pretty cheap. It's like sixty bucks for his full like yeah. suit looking thing. Right. Obviously, it's like a cheap probably sure. material, but you can get it on eBay Clever. for pretty cheap. I yeah. love. Yeah, like sorry, <laughs> one more thing. No, you're. Fine, I like man. to see like what actor they're gonna get. Um, how are they gonna you know do replicate his hairstyle? Because his hair was just insanely crazy. signature, <laughs> crazy exact exact. Signature. It's like a green fro, right? Yeah, and what, I just hope that there's a corgi in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you cannot yes. leave out the corgi. That's great. Um, okay, so on Netflix's track record for animes, I didn't realize this was gonna be a live action thing, so that's kind of weird. And but Netflix animes specifically, I think I've been doing pretty well. So. Um, Seven Deadly Sins. Have you seen that? Never. Nope. It's great. Okay. It's really good. They kind of... Um, I think that's one that Lydia and I were about to start like two or good. three weeks ago. Didn't it just come out like a while ago? It's been ago? out for a Summer? year. Oh, okay. year or two. There's another one that just came out a few weeks ago that we're about to start. Uh, real quick to cut you off. <laughs> Neo Yokio. Okay. You told I me about that. I love that yeah, one. Yeah. Ezra really? Koenig, the lead singer of Vampire Weekend. It's his anime. What? That's cool. Yes. What? It's season one already came out a year and a half ago. Lydia and I, literally, Lydia and I, literally just got done talking about how many, how much we want a season two. Right. I love That's that anime. Awesome. Man. I need. Thank you for bringing I, up I Netflix original. A little bit yeah. of it, but I, I should probably watch more of it. Dude, it is so good. I need to give it because I like. I was, you know, it's one of those things where I, I started watching it and I'm like. I kind of dozed off, <laughs> but I'm gonna give it another shot. Ezra Koenig is like my favorite, one of my favorite Doesn't lead singers of all time. So. Have something to do with uh, what's Will, Will Smith's son? Jaden Smith. Yeah, I think the, he's a voice, voice actor role? in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So awesome. good, man. So Nick, how um, do you feel now that you know it's live action? It's a little. I don't know. That's weird. If okay. um, if I don't know, anime should stay anime, I guess. Because yeah, there's so much stuff that the reason anime is good is because of all the just like crazy intense stuff that they can get away with, mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard to like, translate that, that into yeah, live action. Real life. Um, but another one uh, for the animated style, um, Castlevania has been getting insanely good reviews. So that's another one I haven't checked out yet, but I want to. Yeah, dude, um, everybody I follow in the games industry and I put the quotations up because I follow so many people. It says that Castlevania is so, so good. And I'm not a huge Castlevania fan, man. I, like, I haven't either. I actually just re listened to an episode of Game Scoop recently where they were talking about it again. Symphony of the Night. And oh my right. God, Nick. I can't I wanna, believe you brought I, this that's up. That's the only I one I want to play. <laughs> on, it was $5 on Black Friday. <laughs> I went and downloaded it. I have it on my Xbox One to play right now. Really? But you know how Damie, Damon Hatfield, always yeah. talks about uh, Blood, Stain, Blood Moon or right. Blood Stain Curse of the Moon? Yes. I've been playing it for like months dude on the way here like you know i've been falling i've got the sleep issue going on but like on the way here i tried to play it for a while really got stuck in an area but it's so good and okay. apparently that's the closest uh, uh, Met, uh castlevania type game metroidvania right, right, right. i hate using that term what but castlevania? so castlevania is a side-scrolling puzzle puzzle action game action adventure game so think about back on the super nintendo right like those kind of graphics 16-bit and except actually Kinda Castlevania. Kind like the Dr. Mario? No. So Dr. Mario is like a puzzle game. Straight up puzzle, puzzle game. Like Tetris. Mm -hmm. This is more like uh, Metroid. Do you know Super Metroid yeah. with Samus? Like you're, you're actually a beast at that game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
it's more like that where you like have these special powers and once you get new powers you can go back to different areas that you already went through but like since you have that new power you can go through like different things so it's like okay. re it recycles areas so that you can experience more when you have like unlocked new things so like it's really smart game mechanic especially in the 16 bit area anyway Makes we're sense. getting long of the tooth guys in this to- topic so let's move on to well, Nick, do you have one more last thing? I was going to say one last thing. Okay. Um, how you were saying, like, Netflix is, like, has a terrible reputation. Have you looked, what, uh, are you caught up on South Park at all? No. What okay. do you mean? <laughs> well, South Park, uh, this most recent season has made, like, multiple jokes, like, just, like, beating Netflix stick in the ground about, no like, way. how they're hungry for content and they'll, like, take any show ever because they have so many Netflix originals I love now. How they do that. Their I Netflix do originals, that. at first, every one of them was, like, amazing. But now I feel like every time I open Netflix, there's a new like Netflix original something. And like they made a joke. It was like they had seven. Now they have 70. Yeah. Like, it was like, but they kept making jokes. Like people, the kids were trying to call into Netflix to get a show, to like make their own show. And like Netflix <laughs> tagline when they answer the phone was like, Netflix, you're greenlit. Oh like, my God. <laughs> it, was just, it was hilarious. Dude, uh, my coworkers at work were talking about how great South Park is right now. Like it's just really doing oh, some cool stuff. I don't know. That's a show that I I just seriously just want to like, I wish I had an easy way to just watch it. Is it on Hulu? Hulu, yeah. All of it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, just need to start watching on the elliptical because I'm like running out of stuff right now to watch. Well, but guys, you have 20, thank you for telling us about that, seasons. <laughs> Yeah, they have like what, 21 seasons yeah, or something yeah, yeah. right now? Yep. It's I'm glad cl- they're going strong. Dude. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. They're not, like, giving up. We're looking outside and seeing this wind blow super hard. We got to leave here in... What time is it? Can you look at your phone? We're good. Uh, 8.48. Okay. Well, we have to leave in, like, 20... Get ready to start yeah, leaving yeah. in about 20 minutes. So, let's uh, talk about... Let's have our... This pro poker player real quick. I just want to see this what you guys think about this. All right. about this. All right. So, real quick. Pro poker player locks himself in a dark room for a, on a 100K bet. Rory Young, an Australian poker player, bet his friend, Rich Alati, a United States poker player, 100 k that he can't sp- spend 30 days in a pitch black room, the room being a bathroom, for 30 days. It's an, and it started on November 21st, guys, so we're 10 days deep already. He hasn't come out yet. He hasn't like asked to like be let out. Um, this is happening in an undisclosed location in Vegas. And Alati, the guy that is doing this for the 100K, he apparently did not do any preparation at all. He didn't, like, test himself in a dark room for a day. Or he didn't test himself in any way with, like, having no light at all. So some of the prerequisites uh, or some of the uh, things for this is that he has no, he cannot have any drugs at all. Right. No drugs at all. He cannot have any light-emitting objects. So no phone, no Jeez. radio, no alarm clock. Nothing at all that would emit light. But he does get any food he wants. He has a bed. He has a shower. He has a bathtub and lavish toiletries, including like a awesome like bubble bath stuff, <laughs> Epsom, Epsom salts. Sure. Uh, and he has f- all the food he wants from this Flower Child, which is an awesome restaurant apparently in, in Las Vegas somewhere. Okay. So I'm assuming it's kind of close to that. Sure, you know, yeah. He's staying in. And he has sliced fruit, pop tarts, almond milk. He has his own fridge. Okay. The fridge doesn't have a light at right. all, which is something to keep in mind. So think about this. You're in a pitch Dude. dark room, guys. I want you to think about this right now because I'm going to ask you a few things. But uh, he has those meals delivered from Flower Child. And it's not on a regular basis. It's not like every night he's going to get a meal. It's not. It's like a different time situation. So he has no idea what time it is. Right. That's another thing. Think about it. You have no phone, no watch, nothing that can emit light. Even if you have a watch that doesn't have a backlight, you right. can't read it. There's right. no light at all. So he has no idea what time it is. That would drive me insane, dude. That's so right. <laughs> a couple more details before I toss it to you guys to see what you guys think about this. Live streaming in a dark room. Uh, the live stream shows that like it has like a uh, what's it call it darkness or the darkness area like uh, you, you can see him in the dark it's like in the, the night, vision. night vision yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I was spacing on night vision but I was I've been drinking <laughs> night vision is crazy because it looks like there's a light but really like you can right. see them but you actually you can't, can't see, see that yeah, yeah. light yeah it is a weird weird technology for sure but his that is available for his families at a uh, private live stream so that they know he's safe sure they yeah. know he hasn't like hurt himself they know like he hasn't tripped and hit his head sure you know yeah. like all these like little things you don't think you about 
about right. without having light. His sister said, do not do it. I do not want you to do this, Rich. He's still like he. She says there's consequences. There's right. some stuff going on for his concerns over his health. And the number one that my coworker actually brought up is your eyesight. Yeah. Think about your eyesight yep. not having any light for 30 days. Right. Your eyes are built to capture light. Okay. So yeah. like, if you shut your eyes, you can still capture light. Like your eyes are always searching for light. Right. So in the fact that he when he comes out, he has to have like. 90 percent black and dark glasses yes. go down yeah. like really well really that's what work. i'm saying yeah you'd have to gradually work your way up to being able to be in just normal daylight it would again. take days if not weeks i'm sure oh, like yeah. he's been there for to, 30 to do days it safely yes this is 100k guys i want to know what you guys think about that nick i'll kick it to you i honestly yeah i think there would be a lot of health things like involved here yeah. the eyesight thing is a big one um just uh, dude honestly i think it's very easy to go insane like you if you think of people like in prison in solitary confinement those people literally go insane like they like are they mess up they get messed up in the head from that like and to not have any sort of social communication with anybody not have anything to look at for that long like i think it's gonna actually have probably some negative impacts that he maybe wasn't expecting like that's scary the interview with the person Rory Young from Australia, again, like a, a friend of his, uh, said that, hey, dude, I would have asked for more money. My, my, his, he said his threshold is $5 million to do this for 30 days. That's, and Rory's basing his like fun $100,000 bet off of the fact that he's asked so many other poker players, hey, like it's a fun joke for him, sure. or like a fun conversation starter for him is, Hey man, like how much would it take for you to do this? Or how many days could you do this for a hundred K and most poker players say 15, two weeks to 15 days to 20 days. So the fact that, uh, Mr. Alati, rich Alati said he can do a hundred K for 30 days is insane. So that's why he took that bet instantly. So that's guys, that's a, it's a straight up bet. And this is a history like there's a history right. behind poker players having crazy ass bets. Yeah. Luis, before money I get blow. into some fun like weirdo bets I've like have on this article, uh, <laughs> read off to you guys. I want to hear what you think about the fact that it, he's doing this. Do you think you could do a thirty days? Absolutely not. I've read similar studies to this before. There has been a lot of people who have done studies to this, and like you said, your eyes do adjust to light, so your eyes will basically like you'll turn into a vampire. Um, I think when he comes out to the real world, I think he's going to be traumatized, dude. I think it's going to yeah. have a lot of long-term effects towards his life. I even think like even when he sleeps, like he might not even be able to sleep in a dark room right. anymore. This is, has very, very – I don't know how old this guy is. He's, I'm assuming he's still pretty young. I don't know, so but I'm assuming 30. It's going to have very long-term effects on him, not, like, not necessarily very health-wise, but just like – his mentally own, dude mentally yes it's just like you said i would have done it for more money or i, I wouldn't have so, even done it in general because if you just want to live as the same person right i would not do that kind of extra that's to the extreme and too extreme that's insane well because i was trying to think of what i would do in that situation if i was put in that situation if you were like a prisoner of war or something and someone's like stuck you in a cage and you're just done like yeah those people don't come out like correctly i don't think he's gonna be okay i just don't think he's gonna be the same person that's why his sister said don't do this rich if you can't like read you can't like do anything to stimulate your mind and you're just in the darkness for that long i don't get like what would you do sit-ups and push-ups right well that's what i'm thinking you'd have to do something to like get your mind work out you're right you're right Um, that's another thing i'd probably just if sorry if i was in that situation now that you say that i would probably work out yeah to sean's note i was thinking like you would be meditating. You would be like, I, I, you'd probably end up, you'd probably be tripping on just like the fact that you're like, you're getting your head Yo, I've so done a much, 20 minute like, meditation session. I legit felt like I was in control of some weird stuff in my yeah. own head. Like yeah. I'm sure you would see so a lot the, of weird stuff. Man, especially in the dark. Full, full darkness too. Yeah. I meditate in the dark, but like the sun comes up. Right. And you, it yeah, creeps yeah. into the window. This, there's nothing. Right. Zero. No simulation. It's pitch black. Man. Can I ask you guys something? Have you ever actually been in a dark room? Like completely dark and actually just sat in there? Dark? Yes. I mean, I have been, but not for more than like <laughs> I don't know if you guys minutes. have experienced this, but when you actually sit in a dark room, you will start seeing shit in there. 
Well, see, I think it's something from my this. experience. I mean, I think um, you're right. Yeah, I bet you you do. So I have tinnitus too. So I feel like that would just be like blaring over because if you have no other stimulation, like that's all you. It's can all in your hear. head. You so. just start seeing things that aren't really there. He has no, no ability. To, he's in there right now. He's been in yeah. there for ten days. He has no ability to communicate with the outside world. He doesn't know that George H. W. Bush just died. Right. He doesn't know Cardi B and Nikki are still fighting. <laughs> he, doesn't know, he doesn't know any of this. Yeah, like, he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, he doesn't know Kim uh, Kim and Kanye bought his Boeing seven thirty six airplane. <laughs> like Jeez. he knows nothing. But guys, he's a poker player. He's a better at heart. He's a gambler at heart. He's not here gonna is, give up easy. Yeah, here are some bets out there, guys. I'm gonna pick a couple of my favorites from this like poker update crazy article I love. Um but Joe Hennigan, he was bet that he could not spend six weeks in Des Moines, Iowa. What? Really? Yeah. He <laughs> bet he bet six with another weeks. poker player. He w- could not spend 6 weeks in Des Moines, Iowa. What? This was mo- multiple years, 10, 20 years ago, back when we barely had anything going on. Now we know like Des Moines winning a a, a yeah. top Awards, of the list. Yeah. Like Des Moines on the list of like best cities to live in and right. all that, right? But like this is 10, 20 years ago before all that. And he made it 2 days really two days he said he couldn't do it had to go home the money is not on here so it could be a thousand dollars right yeah but if it was a hundred thousand dollars you're a fucking punk easy because yeah yeah. you suck like 20 (laughs) years ago i could have spent i did spend six weeks in des moines multiple hundred times you can go to movies you can do stuff to take up your time yeah uh let me look at a couple other ones on here this one i know i could do Ashton Griffin runs 70 miles on a treadmill for 300K. In 2011, Ashton Griffin risked it all to run 300 miles, uh, or excuse me, 70 miles on a treadmill for $300,000. The bet was 70 miles. It, the bet was over 24 hours. He had to run 70 miles in 24 hours, and he had to run at a certain speed for the mile mileage to count. He couldn't just walk. I could easily. I mean, that. I could do that, dude. That would fuck you up though, too. 70? That's not too 70 bad. miles. I How many run- miles do you do in a workout? Well, I can run 10 miles in about an hour and a half, two mm-hmm. hours. But, like, yeah, I'm sore as shit, but right. I can. And you have to do – you're going to need a break and then go right back to it over the course. Man, yeah, you'd be – That's 300 no, you're, K. I know, but your the body – The money I make per year multiplied yeah. by X dollar. Like, I mean, yeah, you would get – you would push through it, but – Yeah, man, your body miles. would be fucked. 70, 70 miles. So, a 5K is 3.1 miles, and that is, like, general, like – uh, doesn't uh, matter. Does it, is there's there's a speed limit. Right? So it was a speed. A marathon, and you have to do it within yeah, twenty four hours. Yeah, he has to run at a certain speed. It doesn't it doesn't say in this article? I, I couldn't do it, man. Three hundred k though, guys. That's I mean, I would try my you. damnedest. Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. Would be. <laughs> but I mean, well, you lo- lose three hundred k. Oh, well, okay. may, maybe your like your inner superpower superpowers kick in, you right? Know, where your adrenaline just like. But then by the by by the time you're done, you just like your body just like gives yeah, out. After 30 minutes oh, yeah. of cardio. So a marathon, for instance, is 26 miles. So that's oh. almost three full marathons in 24 hours. See, that's nuts. Yeah, that is is really hard. But it's a treadmill too. You have to keep in mind it's different than outdoors. I think I could do it personally, but I'm more of a runner right. than you two. Shout Here's out the you. most <laughs> famous poker bet of all time, guys. We're wrapping up the podcast here, but I know Luis is like, I'm out of beer. I need a beer. Cause that's how I feel too. The most famous bet. Brian Zembic gets fake boobs for 100K. What? In 1996, Brian Zembic made history by agreeing to get fake breast implants and keeping them for a year in exchange for $100,000. What? He, According to Zembic, he could get as much attention as a woman could with fake breasts. <laughs> he proved his point. He won it. He became a national superstar. Not really, right? Like right. He, he did not become a national superstar. But he was like... Everyone was like all eyes on his, uh, you know. Cojones. I think that's actually rem- that sounds so familiar for some reason. Well, yeah, it happened in the U.S. 1996, and Marilyn then after Manson. a year, after a He's- year, he he decided to keep them. What? He still has them to this really? day. Really? Oh my god! That's Poker crazy. player playing with implants kept him after he made a hundred k off of it. Does he what? shave his chest, or does he still have like <laughs> sh- hairy so, ass the, chest? There's a video. There's a Dateline NBC video about it, and on fa- on YouTube, it's like a Dateline rewind because it's right. like 23 years old almost now. Yeah. And weird. it's him like with all these like compression shirts to like stop like it from showing he has like implants. It's oh insane. Gosh. He's not like a skinny guy, but sure. he's not like a thin guy either. Right. Or, a bigger guy either yeah. so he's just kind of like this middle-weighted middle-aged dude with just like 
bigger <laughs> boobs. It's interesting. Weird. So, bottom line, there's no effing way. I talked to my coworker about this. He, Casey, shout out to Casey because he actually like had me like read about this article and like got this topic on the podcast. That's great. Uh, he listens to the podcast here and there, so it's cool. But there's just no way I could make it at most, at most seven days. That's just me at most. With I know for a fact I can't make it past. 14 with implants no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> implants. I like, what? Heck no i wouldn't do that in a second for 100k you'd have to pay me like 10 million more uh, yeah i could maybe do that for 10 million though <laughs> 10 million dollars i would never have to work again in my life could do easy peasy stuff true live modestly but i'd have to go a year with breast implants <laughs> shit you i don't just, I, I would do it just shut yourself in your house you no know, one's saying you have to go yeah, out yeah, and exactly them. <laughs> Lydia might leave me, but do you guys think you could do, let's get back to the nitty gritty. Do you, can you do, I know you already said Louise, so I'll toss to you, Nick. Can you do dark room, all the food, any food you want from this amazing restaurant? Uh, let's go back down the line a little bit. You have a mini fridge that has some snacks in it. You can't do any drugs. You can't, which I'm assuming means ibuprofen even right. too. Like yeah. if you're working out and you pull a muscle, that right. sucks. Um, and he had no preparation, no light mini object at all. No, no contact with your wife. Yeah, right. I honestly would probably say no. Yeah, well, because it's just not enough. Um, I'm just thinking like back when I was a teenager, and I would like straight up get bored. I would be laying in my bed like I have nothing to do. This is killing me. I'm gonna die. And if there's like, and I had video games to play with, I could go outside, I could go skateboard, I could go hang out with my friends, I could do whatever the fuck I want, but I thought I was bored of shit, and I had nothing to do, and I was gonna die. If I was in a literally black room with no stimulation, no books, no TV, no nothing, dude, uh uh-uh, there's no way. (laughs) PTSD, dude, you'd have, you definitely had some major PTSD. That's exactly right, man, like, you're gonna suffer the consequences, not only your eyes, but your head. You need hella therapy after that. Let's end the podcast strong, guys. We got this Electric Force 2019 information. It will be one weekend. That When that news dropped, I'm not going to lie, guys. That dropped at like noon or so, or I saw that at noon. Could not work the rest of the day. Oh, nope, same. Could not work. Yeah. So one weekend is so Could insane to me because the last two years, 2016, 2017, or excuse me, 17 and 18, have yep. been two years. Right. Or two weekends, two excuse weeks. me. The crew is all thinking they're going to do Good Life Back 40 now, I guess, huh? That's yeah. pretty insane. Might as well go out with the banger, man. So you think it'll be your last year as oh, well? Oh, yeah. Least? It'll be my last year. But I, I wanted I wanted to be I wanted to be done right and good, and I want to go all out with the fam. Because, like, every year that I go, I'm always separated. Every year we plan to be together, something happens. It doesn't work, man. It doesn't Even when, work like, out. Last year, to we tried to meet in Maple Woods. Like, no one had beer. People had <laughs> people were doing different things. People, you know, it's just so disconnected. But when you're yeah. together, camping together, that was, man, Nick. Some of the best you, times is just chilling at camp. Yeah, can you think back to like good luck, or excuse me, when we were general admission, yeah. 2014, 2015, and like we just had everyone there. We had right. nothing to worry about Maple Woods, nothing to worry about in good life. Yep, you didn't have and to even, go anywhere. Even your your um your wedding year, 2017, Alex and Isaac were good life. We yep. were Maple Woods. Half the cr- most of the crew was general admission. Right. It's just crazy, man. Yep. So I love what you say, Louise. I love how you say the whole crew will be together. And that's what matters to you. And that's just, yeah. The hype train is pulling away, guys. Electric Force has been announced. It's happening. It's the last weekend now of June, which is officially the Rothbury weekend. I don't know right. if you guys know that. Oh. But when Rothbury started in 2009, I believe, or 2000 and, yeah, nine, Rothbury was the last weekend of June, full stop. But since with this two weekend stuff and like as years progress, a right. day gets moved back and whatnot, like force turned into like the second and third or, or third and fourth weekends of, yep. in June. And now finally we're going back to that one weekend. I love their message with conservation. So right. what they're doing is they're making that one weekend, but they're expanding the grounds. They're putting grass where there wasn't grass. They're putting new grass where there was bad grass. Mm-hmm. They're making sure that they're taking care of stuff. They're probably planting new trees. Right. They're probably planting new things to expand the forest. And mm-hmm. I hope that they're making these efforts to make sure that forest is happens 10 years from now. Yeah. That's basically what that post said. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. 
Because even just one weekend, do you ever see the before and after it takes photos? Takes a lot of wear and tear on that place. They do I mean, before and like after photos. Thirty thousand like, people in one place. Right. Yeah. They'll do a photo of. They'll take a photo of just the forest before they start setting anything up, and it's tall grass and trees and foliage and everything. And then they'll take a photo of it after everyone clears out, and it's just mud and dirt and just everything's, you know, completely wrecked. Um, and of course, it just grows back naturally. But you know, two weekends in a row. Of all that damage done, I can see that you know over time, it's like, too much on the alive. forest. Yeah. Last yeah. year we had thirty thousand people, up, up, approximately for yeah. weekend yeah. one, about forty something thousand for weekend two, guys. We're talking almost seventy thousand people, yeah. if not a little bit more. This year, I'm worried about a couple things though. So there's gonna be less people, which is great for the weekend, right? There's not gonna be seventy thousand, but those people all bought tickets. Those people all yeah. get loyalty codes. This for, this electric forest is going to sell out. Before it goes general on sale. Yes. Calling it now. Yeah. I mean, I, would I say believe so. it. Because, I mean, I'm just like reading all the forums and stuff. People really like plan this. People make this a big deal. People make electric forests oh, yeah. their life. I told That's Lydia what, I mean, this multiple years ago, but I say it all the time. A forest, electric forest is part of our identity. Yeah. No, it totally is. It, mm-hmm. It's almost as like hardcore was part of my identity a while ago or mm-hmm. like certain music, certain bands. This entire... This entire family, this entire, everyone that goes, Mm -hmm. I never, like, we always kind of smirk, like, we're still human beings, right? Right. We kind of smirk at people at a forest, like, that guy's dressed weird. That guy looks (laughs) weird. But I never say or, like, express it. I obviously think it, because I'm a human being. But, like, forest is where you can go to be yourself, 100%. For sure. Full full stop. No judgment. Just, everyone's super nice. I am the most loud, obnoxious mother effort <laughs> ever go absolutely ham some nights go absolutely dead in my die some other nights let's let's close out this podcast guys i just want to make sure we talk about electric force real quick but might be more to come <laughs> yeah more to come this is going to be a huge deal because the whole entire friend group that is going is doing back 40 now that is nuts it's gonna be great. i can't yeah. wait i cannot if, wait you you sean you talk it up like it's the vip of vip like was, and i'm it, like I mean, you can go back and listen to Electric Forest pre-show when we were hyping on it, hype train, and then Electric Forest cool down where we talked, Nick and I, and, and at Electric Forest where Nick and I talked about yeah. some of the stuff that we liked, all on the easy peasy, and there's so much to like talk about, and we will be talking about more later, the amenities, there might be some changes this year, so we will be talking about it. Real quick, last thing I want to say before we close out the show. This is a great podcast, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking away time to pregame with our significant others. It means a lot to me. Uh, who are your hopefuls? Who do you want to show up? I'll start. Run the jewels. Number one. They Not number one in my opinion, but like number one on my list. Uh, they have never been to Electric Forest. They are sure. a high-tier rap act, but they aren't quite like Travis Scott. Or right. they aren't quite like... Kendrick Lamar or Kanye West, sure. right? But they're that second tier, like action That's Bronson. That's exactly what they get, yeah. So they could totally play Vampire Weekend. They're going to have a, a new album out in 2019. Vampire Weekend has been on my bucket list, and they're number one on my bucket list right now. I just nice. saw Yeah, Yeah, Yes at Oshiaga in Montreal, Canada, and they were number one. Now Vampire Weekend takes, takes the spot. I want to see them so bad. Contra is my... Top five, top ten favorite album of all time. Skrillex. He's going to have a humongous 2019. This is a shoe oh, yeah. win. He yep. and Bass Nectar are going to be Friday, Saturday, respectively. Yeah. Skrillex on Friday. Bass Nectar on Saturday. Headlining. Yep. Uh, I have I mean, it's a hot, automatically going to happen. My last here, I hope you guys have come up. Maybe one in your head or somebody that you just want to see. It doesn't have to be someone that you think is going to play. Sure. My last one, he's been silent for a full year. Flume. Flume has not put out anything this in a year. He hasn't done anything after that skin tour. He's got to be working on something. Exactly. So yeah. Flume could possibly be a headliner. Those are all my hopefuls. But obviously, if, right. if anyone knows me in real life and knows my musical taste, those are all artists I have to see. I love. I love. Right. That so makes a lot of Nick, sense. Nick, let me toss it to you. I was talking in an awkward way to my mic, so <laughs> that probably sounded awful. But Nick, who... Number with just one artist or maybe one or two that you want to see or that you think will play. Um, so actually, I was gonna Skrillex was the top of my list too, and I believe I am in the same boat as you. I think he's gonna have a huge 2019. I think he's gonna probably do the festival circuit now that he is gonna have new music coming out and stuff. Um, I was trying to think of who else because they they always you're right they always do those like 
mid to top tier rap acts. And then and like a top sprink- tier uh, alternative act, sprinkle like my in morning some, jacket. They sprinkle in some uh, alternative, yeah, for good measure. Um, I'm trying to think of, I don't really know. Skrillex is the only one I'm like pretty dead sure is going to happen. I don't know if you guys um, heard, but today there was a drop online. Uh, have you guys seen the Electric Forest calendars that have been like yeah. teased online? Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what, guys? We officially have our first few acts of Electric Forest. Well, not officially. Well, I was me. wondering if that... Uh, yeah. There's pictures in gonna... there. Ganja White Knight. Yeah. Ganja White Knight's in there. And we also have... I have it pulled up right here. Give me one Some uh, forest natives. The you know, Midnight LA, Anomaly there. Talk, Black Tiger Sex Machine, Daya, Pigeons Playing Ping Pong, Dixon's Violin... The Librarian, Gorgon City, and Mace, Mansion Air, and Ripe. Yeah. So we got, yeah, like Ganja White now. Like I said, awesome. Um, actually, so for rap acts, um, a couple that I think could possibly happen. Uh, Vince Staples or Earl Sweatshirt. Earl Sweatshirt. Vince so Staples played in 2017, weekend one, your wedding week, uh, um, wedding year. Yeah. But he Both just have released. new music coming out, so or did come out. So, Dude, Earl Sweatshirt would be epic. We saw him at... Somerset. Did you see him, though? Yeah. Okay. I was there. Yeah, we were there. You you split the set. The though, right? bass was in s- the m- heaviest oh, bass man. I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, the, that was the heaviest bass I've ever heard as well, <laughs> Nick. And it shook my heart. Like yes. I remember feeling yeah. my <laughs> chest cavity some, shake. Some stuff got rearranged. And that's an outdoor in my show. Body. Luis, before we cap off the show, what is an act that you think could be playing? Who do you want to see? Kind of related to Earl's sweatshirt. I honestly think like Tyler, the creator, could be one one of those tears. I would love that. I love Tyler. I've seen him twice. I love him to death. He's amazing. I saw him at Oshiaga. I've never actually seen him live yet. So. I've never song, seen him. I went to Valor by myself and saw him, by the way, guys. Really? This is uh, two, summer 2015. So, yeah, it was amazing. He played 48. He played everything off of Wolf I wanted him to play. It was before Flower Boy, which is uh, a Grammy-nominated rap album of the year. And another one, um, I feel like since Travis Scott's really been making it up in the festival scenes, I feel like Travis yeah. Scott is another one that would really that. be there. He's so big, though. Yeah. Um, that part is that big. The headline Electric Forest is really long shot, but it could happen this year. One weekend, they have all that booking, networking yeah. built in for two weeks. They have two weeks' worth of artists. They still have a pool. They have those managers. They have those tour managers. They have all those right. uh, booking agents that they have on speed dial. They can call whoever they want. Agreed. You guys have been awesome. Let's get over there and party for another 15, 20 minutes. Yes, sir. This has been an awesome, easy peasy episode 97. Thank you so much, guys, for sitting in here. I know you guys want another beer. I do too. <laughs> What's up? Nick, they can find you at bazooka underscore Nick on Instagram. Luis is Luis, L U I S underscore L I C E A. Luis underscore Lisea on Instagram. I'm Sean S. Johnson on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, everything. You can get the easy peasy on the easy peasy. Keep your eyes out for more The Easy Peasy Podcast. Totally games cast with Trey. That's going to be going weekly in 2019. But, hey, I'm just breaking the four Sean there. <laughs> and also some more Easy Peasy plays. Thank you so much, guys. This has been Easy Peasy Podcast, episode 97. Yeah. Yeah.